rigorous tests clearly show the effectiveness of these teaching methods. Life skills games are introduced to Balsabar Girl Councils to develop confidence, self-awareness, and problem-solving skills. These leadership groups give girls an active voice in their community and generate strong peer support networks. Many council members have even worked together to help their out-of-school friends to re-enroll and continue their education. FEGG has been working in the Pali district for over two years. As a result, girls' enrollment and attendance has soared. Many schools have female teachers, separate toilets, and safe drinking water. And 6,500 girls' council members have been trained to act as leaders, role models, and advocates for improving girls' education. Educating girls has been shown to have positive effects beyond the classroom. An educated woman is likely to earn more have healthier children, educate her daughters, understand and exercise her rights, and be three times less likely to contract HIV AIDS. The success of FED programs signals the empowerment of Indian women within their communities and hope for a more positive future. In the coming years, Foundation to Educate Girls Globally hopes to expand their model and reach out to marginalized girls in other districts, states, and countries because every child deserves a chance to be at school. The literacy rate for lower caste women in rural Rajasthan is less than 5%, the lowest in India. Rajasthan is also the state with the largest disparity between girls' and boys' education. It is, in essence, as tribal in nature as Afghanistan and poses the largest cultural impediments to sending girls to school. In the districts where egg program have been implemented, girls' attendance has risen from 90 to 99%. Egg works to improve the quality of girls' education in rural tribal regions of India. Three years in every district in Rajasthan is spent to promote and support girls' education through an enrollment retention via community mobilization program, Learning training via child-focused learning techniques, CLT they call it. Girls' leadership, which is a very important part of the program, is forming girls' councils or Bal Shabas, which is really a parliamentary system, which equips the girls with life skills that build their confidence, promote leadership, and actually has real power where they interact with the government and, and relay their needs and, and, and have a whole system. And that is where the ownership sort of takes hold. The learning results after only three months, um, and then some of our tests have gone from Hindi reading from 42 to 59 percent, English reading of a sentence and more from 15 to 43 percent, and math skills from 26 to 57 percent. I wouldn't believe it myself if it wasn't Barbara, who is a rabid econometrician with uh, the most stringent of testing standards and, and uh, randomized studies, uh, that it's, it's really quite extraordinary what they've been able to do in such short periods of time. When girls are educated, birth rates fall, and every four years in school reduces family size by one. Child mortality falls and family health improves. Educated mothers are 40% more likely to immunize their children and five times more likely to educate their children. Thus, literacy in future generation accelerates. National income grows by 10% for each additional year of schooling. Regions stabilize as violence and extremism decline, and that's another whole subject that we won't get into, but it's one to really think about. Here's those statistics I'm going to repeat just one more time because they really are, they say it all. Of the 130 million out-of-school girls in the developing world, 70% are girls. And if a girl has more than seven years of education, she marries four years later, has 2.2 fewer children, than girls with less than seven years education. And again, when a woman in the developing world earns that income, she spends 90% of it on her family, and while the man is likely to only spend 30 to 40. It pretty much says it all. So Educate Girls Globally is currently implementing its model in 2,342 government schools in the, in the Pali district. 
and plans to start working in 50% of the schools in Jalor. Education for girls is weakest in these two districts, but this translates to reaching 600,000 children and expanding this year to reach a million. Egg is also planning launches in Uttaranchal, India, Pakistan, Tanzania, and other South Sub-Saharan Sub African nations. We can create a program anywhere that we can raise the funding to do it. So in conclusion, Egg is currently being studied by Nobel Econ uh, Eco Economics Prize winners such as Eleanor Ostrom and Douglas North. Interestingly enough, it's not for the meteoric educational metrics, but for what happens in townships where the program is at work that we were not dis directly responsible for, the ancillary results, the results that were not even anticipated in the program design. Girls' toilets miraculously started appearing in schools where there were none before, a leading girls of, uh, cause of girls dropping out when menstruation begins. They went from 44 to 71 percent. Wells also appeared where there were none, from 46 to 82 percent. And no one paid a dime for any of this. This is the stakeholdership magic of empowerment. When a small rural community suddenly grasps the fact that they can actually take possession of their own institutions and their own futures. It's hard to quantify, but it's impossible to deny. When you try to help a poor village by building a well, and this is a true story from a senior official at the World Bank, and you go back a year later to find it not working, the villagers will tell you, lady, your well broke. You should fix it. But if the villagers build a well and the villagers maintain it and keeps it working, why? Well, because it's not some lady from Canterbury's problem, it's theirs. I understand everyone here has seen misrepresentation. And this message applies to all women, though on different levels, and more so than ever to the poorest. My takeaway from this film was the resonating quote from Alice Walker. The most common way people give up power is by thinking they don't have any. It's always assumed charity in the form of handouts or donations was all that can be given and done for the poorest of people as it assumes they are helpless. But the poor too have ability and skills when they're empowered and they have the assets to deploy. Hence, once again, education and the leadership skills to use it are the most valuable gift anyone can offer. So thank you all for being so generous with your time and allowing me to share a subject near and dear to my heart I urge everyone here to do what they can and get involved. It all starts with awareness. And if anyone's looking for a summer job, we can't pay much, but you'll, you'll learn a lot. Thank you. I saw a hand up over. Yep. <laughs> well, um, a lot of it is usually in the bars. It depends on what country, but it, it's definitely not going home. Um, it's usually spent on themselves. Yeah. Uh, but to be to be clear, this program doesn't just educate the girls. There's a very strong bias to, to and, and focus on getting the girls back into school or to stay in school, but it actually works in schools that are co-ed and it, it improves the school for everyone. Um, but it's just don't leave the girls behind. Any other questions? In areas where the literacy rate is so low mm -hmm. and you're building new schools and trying, to, where do the teachers come from if there's nobody that's educated to get there? Most of the schools are already built. Okay. So you're trying to make these essentially charter eyes, if that's a word. Okay. Um, the existing school structures that are totally inefficient and not working. So for a cost approaching 1% of a government budget in a, in a country like India, you can make all of the infrastructure actually start to work by essentially letting the, the local communities take ownership and, this, and get the teachers to attend. Again, I mean, the teachers don't usually show up in these schools. Um, so it's by bringing them back in and, and having these creative learning techniques that everything just turns around really startlingly quickly. Any... Uh, Anybody else? Okay. Well, anybody can feel free to approach me. I'll be here for a while. And, and thank you so much again.
Well, thank you, Joelle, so much. Um, you couldn't have been a better speaker. Um, I'm, I'm really, really impressed and happy because you are the epitome of what we think we can do with girls at Canterbury, that we can give them a sense that they do have power and that they uh, need to find a passion and that passion will actually make them very happy in life. Um, and it's obvious that you're very happy in what you do. So unfortunately, our evening has to be over now, but um, I just really appreciate so much um, the diverse group that we have. And uh, it's a wonderful feeling every year to look out at this crowd. Um, and if I forget your name on that list, um, our alum parents, um, they will remind me. And I love that. Uh, so I'm going to ask Clara to come up again to send us off. And I thank you all so much for coming. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. We give thee thanks for all thy benefits, O Almighty God, who livest and reignest world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.